also known as catfolk. The tabaxi originate in deep jungles and distant locales where they avoid outsiders and influence from civilization. They are content to stick to their isolationist behavior, but a rare few travel the world as adventurers, bringing back to their clans, weaponry, magic items, and stories of strange worlds. This deep dive looks into the history of the tabaxi, while similar races like the Rakasta introduced in the Mistara setting and the Leonin introduced in the Thero setting are not included. The tabaxi are specifically jaguar or leopard humanoids, while the Rakasta take the form of pretty much any type of feline and the Leonin are only lion humanoids. The Tabaxi first appears in the first edition of Fiend Folio, released in 1981, and are also known as Catman, which is probably the worst superhero name we've heard, second only to Batman. They are a race of intelligent leopard humanoids and really don't want any interactions with others. They stick to distant tropical jungles and roam about in their small pride that rarely hosts more than eight members at a time. These prides claim large swaths of territory but avoid other prides and their territory as much as possible. Since tabaxi avoid contact with much of the civilized world, they are all excellent hunters and as such are carnivores. They hunt by stalking through thick vegetation, hanging from trees, or disguising their scent with the help of aromatic herbs. When they hunt down an animal, they typically send two of their members to chase after them, forcing them to flee into the direction of a waiting tabaxi who launches a sudden ambush, killing the creatures with claws and teeth. Occasionally, the tabaxi will use weapons, though most of their weapons are made of bone or wood, and they prefer the thrill of the hunt. They'll even keep wounded prey alive for a bit of time as they play with their food, allowing it to slowly bleed out or die from exhaustion. We don't know about you, but the similarities between the tabaxi and our own cats are frighteningly familiar. While tabaxi are going to try and avoid outsiders walking through their territory, they may attempt to sneak up on them and steal their weapons. They may end up killing the outsiders, especially if they think it'll be an easy opportunity for metal weapons, though they're intelligent enough to know when they are outmatched. If you do happen to notice these catmen before they rip out your throat with their teeth, you can try and talk to them. They speak their own language, but they know a bit of the common tongue. They won't trade with you as they think trade is demeaning, but they'll probably be happy to tell you how they're going to season and cook their dinner tonight, right after they kill you. Tabaxi first appear in the second edition Fires of Zaltal, released in 1991 Adventure, and are reprinted in the Monstrous Manual, released in 1993, where their lore is uncoupled from the Forgotten Realms. In this edition, there are two different sects of tabaxis, with those that have solid spots are called Leopardmen, pronouncing their name as Tabaxi. The other tabaxi have rosette spots, are called Jaguarmen, and pronounce their name as Tabasi. While they may look slightly different and probably get annoyed if you mispronounce their name, they are quite similar to one another in terms of ecology and culture. Tabaxi are great hunters who stick to thick jungle foliage, surprising their prey with ambushes and traps. They are known for their extreme cleverness, an acute sense of smell, and how it is almost impossible to trap or fool a tabaxi when it comes to ambushes or hunting. They still don't manufacture metal weapons, relying on wood and bone and stone weapons. But who needs weapons when you have razor sharp claws and teeth to tear your enemies to shreds with? If you are smart enough to keep your distance, the tabaxi will resort to attacking with bolos and javelins until they can close the gap between you and them. In addition, it's not just hunters that you'll find if you stumble across a clan's lair. Clans are now made up of up to 7 hunts, with each hunt composed of up to 8 tabaxi. This means that a clan could have as few as 4 or as many as 56 members. They'll have several clubs in each clan, with a single elder who acts as the leader of the clan. The elder is often advised by a shaman capable of casting 3rd level divine spells, and if you feel like foolishly attacking the clan, the clan might be under the protection of a tabaxi lord. The majority of the time, tabaxi clans are neutral or good, following deities who up nature, hunting, and the weather. Unfortunately for you, not every tabaxi clan is happy to neutrally hunt you down, but rather do it evilly. Any clan that is under the protection of a tabaxi lord are evil and incredibly warlike, with their shamans devoted to evil powers who crave destruction and death. Tabaxi lords are powerful creatures, though they don't look like the humanoid felines of other tabaxi, Instead, they appear as huge jaguars or leopards. They are even more cunning and are known for their malicious and cruel natures. They can cast up to 4th level spells, with some gaining this power as a wizard, while others are gifted shamans, 
each focusing on necromancy, illusion, and enchantment spells. Many think of tabaxi lords as cursed tabaxi, especially since they must take a tabaxi as a mate if they hope to produce offspring, though their offspring are always male and are always huge jaguars and leopards, like them. Any offspring they do sire is quickly abandoned in the jungle, forced to make their way and find a clan to dominate and claim. While we aren't sure this is the best way for them to propagate their foul species, we are confident it is a very dangerous way as they have a lot of enemies out in the jungle, like the quaddles. Quaddles and tabaxi lords hate each other and attack on sight, not leaving the battle until one side is victorious and the other side is very much dead and probably torn to shreds. The tabaxi get a few mentions in Dragon Magazine. In Dragon number 106, released in February of 1986, we find out that the tabaxi can become followers of the Fantra, a group of chaotic neutral paladins. Dragon number 127, released in November of 1987, then lets us know that 5% of tabaxis can become berserkers, who they call bloodstalkers, which, if you ask us, is a fantastic title for such a creature. It may not seem like much, but at least the tabaxi are getting acknowledged in a few more places. Now known solely as the Catfolk, they come creeping out of the 3rd edition miniatures handbook released in 2003. Most of them now appear as the cross between a lion and a human, unlike before as a jaguar or leopard, though it makes sense as they are no longer in jungles but in grassy plains. Despite their potential to have great strength, they are typically thin and wiry whose focus on dexterity and speed. If they are forced into a fight or decide to jump in on one, they use light weapons like a rapier and in fact they don't even have a claw or a bite attack to utilize in this edition. They remain as ambush predators, but now they rely on their longbow to bring down their prey, switching to melee weapons if they feel they have the upper hand, or running off across the prairie if they picked on a creature a bit too tough for them. These cat folk are now in on civilization, though they are still pretty wary of outsiders. They wear clothes and armor produced by cities, and the text even specifically points out that they are even capable of wearing belts. While we think our cats would look cute in a belt, we aren't sure why that specifically is called out for the cat folk and how civilized they can dress. If you are hoping to talk to these well-dressed hunters who even completed their look with a belt, then you better be good at speaking cat. Cat folk has a language all their own, known as feline, with each tribe having its own dialect of the language. While they will speak common, and even Nolan Halfling, they prefer to stick to felines so they can mock you and you won't understand them. If you have long been yearning for the chance to roleplay as your house cat, details on their playable race appears in Races of the Wild, released in 2005. But before you get too excited though, be prepared that it isn't all warm gnats in the sun or violently ripping apart your prey with your claws. Cathodes are considered a powerful race to select, so if you do pick one, you are permanently behind a level during your adventures compared to your normal human friends. This simply means that once they hit second level, you'll be taking your first level in whatever class you want, probably rangers since Tabaxi has that as their favorite class. With this reduced level, you have to get something good, right? Tabaxi characters get a plus 2 boost to the charisma and a plus 4 boost to their dexterity. They have a 40 foot walking speed, low light vision, a bonus to their AC, and are given a bonus to listen and move silently checks. While it might not seem a lot, it largely comes from their boost to dexterity and charisma since it is difficult to increase your ability scores without spending a ton of money on magic items to increase them. In fact, a character only gets to increase a single ability score by 1 point every 4 levels meaning about the time that they are level 20, they only get 5 opportunities to do so. If you aren't deterred by this penalty, this book also offers a great insight into cat folk society and how they interact with adventurers. Since cat folk already roam open grasslands and are largely nomadic, they make natural adventurers in search of adventure and excitement. Cat folk like to move in sudden bursts of excitement, so combat gives them quite a thrill as they can explode forward, attacking and slicing in quick succession before it suddenly ends. They are prone to these outbursts, even when just their emotions, as they quickly offer their opinions about pretty much anything, but then never feel the need to repeat themselves. They find people who repeat their opinions over and over to be obnoxious, and will often just shut down any future conversations with them, or just wander off to find something entertaining to do. If you are trying to name your cat folk adventurer first, let us just say that your party is not going to appreciate you. Cat folk names often begin with a D, M, or N, and then contain multiple S and R sounds. The more, the better. This means that you might call yourself Desirius, or Nemirsar, Dinshar, or Mianisa, 
though it doesn't have to be that complicated and you could just be Nira or Dessa for the sake of your party. Not only do you have an impossible to pronounce name to share with your fellow adventurers, but you are also a hoarder of tokens to remind you of previous life and experiences. Calf folk enjoy carrying around random things that remind them of happy memories, great losses, or experiences they wish to recall, only parting with these special trinkets when they meet a long and fast friend, or they die. They don't really get a choice about what to do with their trinkets in death, but otherwise, they are careful to hand out these trinkets to their friends, and only after they explain the story and feelings they get from their tokens. For those who are friends with calf folk, better get a bag of holding to carry all the memories you make with them. After being denied a place in the 4th edition, the Tabaxi undergoes a transformation of sorts when they make their glorious return in 5th edition's Volo's Guide to Monsters, released in 2016 as a playable race and not as a horrific monster to kill and steal their experience points. They are now described simply as cat-like with no specifics as to exactly what they look like, though their names get even more complicated. Now their names are based on astrology, prophecy, clan history, and other esoteric nonsense to create such names like Cloud on the Mountaintop, left-handed hummingbird or skirt of snakes which make it really difficult to call out their name when you need them to help good thing they are willing to accept nicknames and you can call them cloud bird or snake the biggest change for the vaxi comes that despite how most prefer to dwell in their small and tight clans there is a great lord who is the deity of tabaxi and gives each of his children a specific feline trait for some, they are given curiosity, and they are compelled to travel the world in search of artifacts, lore, and weird stories to bring back to their homes. These adventuring tabaxi are celebrated by their clan simply because it keeps them abreast of the news around the world instead of being ignorant isolationists. So be ready to stock up on postcards before you head out to the world. Of course, adventurers aren't the only ones who travel, as there are traveling tinkers and minstrels who travel in colorful wagons, putting on shows, and looking for exotic items and stories to take with them. If being a tabaxi sounds fun, then those looking to create a cat-like character can breathe a sigh of relief, for this edition doesn't make them lose a level to play as one. While the bonuses are reduced, they still keep bonuses to their dexterity and charisma, their walking speed is only 30 feet, proficiency and perception and stealth, and they finally get their claws back. Their claws can now be used to climb up walls, clamber up cliffs, and even slash their opponents to ribbons as unarmed attacks. In addition, they get the ability to truly show off their spastic energy of 3rd edition, where they can suddenly double their speed for a turn, allowing them to cover lots of ground. For those playing as the tabaxi, it's important to know that tabaxi are often fixated on specific things. These fixations are fueled by their curiosity, and it changes every few days where their fixation jumps from topic to topic with little thought of what came before. It is typically accompanied by a strange quirk like stealing items absentmindedly or citing out random trivia from your constant fixation with lore and stories gathered across your travels. This can lead to unforeseen hijinks and colorful roleplay, just don't expect the tabaxi to remember how the fight they got you into even started. The tabaxi are isolationists, but they are slowly leaving their jungles for grasslands and even cities where they can find interesting artifacts and stories to bring back to their clans. Most tabaxi appear as humanoid jaguars or leopards, while others take on the guise of lions and maybe even the majestic house cat. 